Originally, this level was going to transition us to farm. We would go all the way through to the dance where Ellie and Dina share their first kiss. Then we would play through farm, and when Ellie plays the guitar at night, she would remember the Seth incident. So, the opening for this was a little tricky. We needed it to match at least a little what you might expect emotionally coming from prior beats. Because we were already... Something we really wanted to do was highlight the way their lives had turned upside down since she went down this path. We had this idea of recontextualizing all of our usual gameplay mechanics that were designed for really violent ends. The workbench, door bashes, throwable weapons, and even the infected, which is my personal favorite. Peppered throughout the level are moments of levity or shared history. It is not a festival without one of these throwing games. This one, of course, uses our throwable system where you're often chucking explosive things or stunning things, but for a more wholesome purpose, although some people take this game really seriously. A fun aspect of this is if you did well, you could win a toy here. Ellie would place it in her pocket. If you had done this, you'd find the toy with JJ, the baby, later back at the makeup artist is pretty simple. It's one of those little in-game scenes we peppered in to make it feel like Ellie had roots in the town. Hallie, our writer, mentioned that in her mind, an ex-girlfriend of Ellie's tattooed her arm to cover up her scar. So we figured this might be the only time you get to see that. We wanted to hint at it and allude to it and make it feel like there had been so much more that had been happening and so much more that Ellie threw away. This is one of my favorite sections because I think that it achieves both the slice of life aspect of Jackson while also being a stark reminder of how dark the world that they live in really, really is. To attract attention and curiosity, one of the kids was supposed to make this adorable, messed up little clicker impression and the others would giggle. We tried a version where if you got close enough, the kid might try to follow you a little before turning back. Since clickers are blind and move by echolocation, for this game of messed up tag, Ellie must close her eyes and listen for when the children give themselves away. The thought was that these kids are in relative safety. They still grow up with the dangers of clickers and runners, and all those lessons would embed themselves in the games that they play. When the festival got cut, they tried to preserve this moment and move it to the front of the game where the snowball fight is, as a tutorial. However, being in the headspace of a clicker doesn't really teach you how to deal with them. Eventually, it evolved, and they instead made the snowball fight, which was, I think, way more effective. For me, it's character illuminating that not only does Ellie know this game, she plays along. There's a familiarity with the kids that's really nice to see, especially because it's such a difference from the Ellie we see later, who has a sort of hollow normalcy that she's trying to get with JJ, but kind of fails. <laughs> We use our workbench a lot to make a lot of things that kill and maim and hurt people. Here, we had the silly idea of using the same feel, harkening back to the same animations, using the exact same UI to instead fix a drink. Like the workbench, you could pick your base and then you could add something to it. And at the time, we had some different reactions from Ellie based on how strong you chose to make the drink. Something we wanted to prototype though before it got cut was picking up some ingredients around to add like a lime or maybe a bottle of someone's favorite whiskey or salt, like you were earning upgrades. We also toyed with having Ellie carry around the drink you made and occasionally sip it, psyching herself up to go talk to Dina inside because she was nervous. It got too noodly though, because she would need to keep placing it somewhere before she did anything. So it would have ended up more trouble than it was worth.
The ladder acts as an immediate goal for the player, but being able to climb out is not going to be so easy. To keep levels interesting and engaging, we alternate between positive and negative values the player experiences. Here, it's a positive to have found the ladder, but then a negative to discover it's not the solution. But then another positive to identify the next short-term goal of the doorway. By alternating between these opposing values, we give players what they expect, but not how they expect it. This level, internally known as Fine Nora, was quite long in duration as we had to make Ellie traverse a far distance to the opposite side of downtown Seattle. The sewer section was originally longer than what we released the game with, approximately 10 minutes more. This was one of the few areas of the game that used water flow as part of our traversal puzzle. The player has to go upstream to use the current to get to the platform to reach the other side. We mostly cut this mechanic game wide, however, it remained in essence in the section swimming to the aquarium as Ellie when you were avoiding the waves. When players reach the doorway and enter into the room, they're faced with a dead end. The real reason for this dead end room is that on the reversal when exiting back out of the doorway, players are faced with the route onwards. A pipe that they'd not been able to see when they were swept past it on the way in, and something that was hidden from view when on the side platforms. The intention here being that the only option is to go off the standard path in order to search for a way out. Throughout the rest of the level, we also used light to indicate to the player that they were heading in the right direction. At each turn, however, we blocked the direct route forward. Players would know that they just have to keep finding alternative paths. We slowly introduced the player to consider climbing into smaller pipes and crouching in these tight spaces. Up this is out. to slowly build up to and encourage and the player to climb into such a small pipes that they'd have we added a tiny space just to reward the player's exploration with a pickup item. And we made sure it was something that made sense that you'd find in this area. A canister and all the garbage that had been washed into the sewers from the surface. We loved the idea of making Ellie prone through a tiny dirty pipe in order to get out. As it was a great opportunity to use our prone mechanic. Shit, Ellie. The unique camera setup was created to support crawling in these pipes, as the standard prone camera is much higher above the player. We also created custom collision in order for Ellie to maneuver in these tight spaces easily. Initially, the oblong collision capsule around her character caused issues crawling around corners. We put extra effort into the custom corner. In order for the player to feel cramped, claustrophobic and desperate, we'd been enforcing the traversal mechanics that allow for a tight environment which promote these feelings. We introduced the use of the squeeze through so that we can keep the player feeling enclosed and tight, but without repeating the same geometry. Here we change from low ceilings with wider walls to high ceilings and tight walls to change up the spatial pacing and keep the level from repeating itself. Originally, we had the water line much higher here, so players had to swim through this tight tunnel. However, from watching user test feedback, it was, as we surface from the water and over the crest of the slope, we reveal what is further in this tunnel. A clicker that has sprouted and the fungus has grown on the sides of the pipe. It was great to see people who user tested this area becoming increasingly worried as we forced the player to squeeze past the fungus and inches away from the clicker's face, all the time not being sure whether the clicker might be alive or attack them. Although we aren't as cruel as to force a clicker attack in such close proximity, we do have a payoff for this moment. This clicker momentarily turned into Joel to show Ellie's PTSD from what happened to Joel at the start of the game. Ultimately, we decided to save this moment for the farm level, as it was more impactful there because it could become the centerpiece of that experience. 
Whereas in the sewers, we weren't able to make it as much of a narrative point and give it the breathing room and reaction time that it deserves, given the tight space. Ah, oh shit! Ah. For the final section, we eventually opened you out into a wider area as you traverse through such tight spaces leading up to this. So changing the environmental pacing makes it begin to feel like we're coming to the end of Ellie's ordeal. An earlier iteration used the current that would shown at the start for a slightly tougher traversal puzzle to conclude the sewers. The ladder was clearly visible from most of the area, but the player was faced with a fast flowing torrent of water they couldn't cross. If the player attempted to jump into the water, they were not able to swim across the ladder due to the water's speed. But instead, they had to traverse the pipe running along the top of the space in order to get across the water. Using this pipe was retained in the iteration we shipped with, as it's the last of the extreme methods Ellie has to undergo in order to escape the sewers, and what she will go through in her pursuit of revenge. The last ladder climb is quite lengthy, and although we could have trimmed it down to a shorter climb, we liked how this last segment of the journey built anticipation for whether there was success at the top or not after all you've been through. Ultimately, the ladder exits out into the subway station, which is how it connects in the final game. Ellie then has to find her way to the hospital from here, crossing paths with the scars for the first time. So the boar hunt was one of the hardest levels for me to work on. It was a huge challenge with the systems that we had, and we kept trying, but it never felt quite right. Originally, the level happened after the Jackson Festival, which also got cut, but before Farm. Once the festival got cut, it became the prologue to Farm. The intended experience is that we jump forward in time after the fight with Abby in the theater. We don't know where Dina is. We likely assume she's dead, because she was just bleeding out. Ellie is alone, her hair is short, so maybe this is the future or the present. And she's hunting. In early iterations of the fight, it was more arena-like. The player slowly whittles down the boar's health. Ellie gets more visceral and more vicious. We get a little worried about her. As the boar gets weaker, more panicked, more feral, and we start feeling sympathetic to the boar was the hope. Uh, in all of these iterations, especially of these wider areas, it required custom AI and scripting to make sure it continued to feel organic as an animal, but we really needed it to do specific stuff. It needed to be able to close distances really, really quickly. It needed to chart. We must have gone through five or six iterations gotcha. of the bar fight and all, and every single time it changed pretty drastically. We split it into clear phases where one was like all long range, we tried another where you're getting close and you get the jump on it quite literally. You're jumping off of a rock <laughs> to attack it. Uh, and then finally, we tried a bunch where you almost so, sort of uh, go around a bunch of trailers and try, and try and wrestle it. We uncovered after some time that taking down a boar over several phases felt very liberal. The gas station was built to highlight the boar's destructiveness. 
Since it's cramped, the bore feels larger. We also feel trapped with it, though it does trapped with us. When it charges, it gets to us quickly, so we must be on our toes. This made it more aligned with Ellie's sort of hunting for trouble mindset. Listening became more important, as well as moving around slowly so it didn't hear you. Could you spot it before it saw or heard you? And could you get a shot off quickly enough so you could dodge out of the way? Or is the shot worth the cost? It feels like a get you. By the end of the fight, everything would likely be in shambles. The bow would burst through the back and Ellie would follow it and finally enact revenge. It's over. Nowhere to run. The boar kill was supposed to be anything but glorious. With the boar whimpering at the back of the gas 